The Thief vocation is the best class in Dragon's Dogma 2, and it really isn't close at all. He's got a bunch of unique skills, and each can make you extremely powerful with very little effort. In fact, he really only has one bad skill, and with his master skill, you can become completely immune to all damage. Sounds crazy, because it is. Let's take a closer look at the Thief skills in Dragon's Dogma 2 and rank them from worst to best. Shadow Veil is this smoky cloak you can cover yourself in to blend in with the environment, sort of a camouflage if you will. The idea is to use this for when you want to avoid combat. I found it was very easy for targets to see you because attacking makes the cloak less effective, and with a group of pawns it seems largely useless. I do imagine however that playing solo you could use this to grab loot and valuables from caves that are far above your character's current pay grade, but for getting you into good assassination spots it's very ineffective and just a worse smoke cloud that you gain access to later. If it isn't full invisibility, then it really does not work for stealth that well. Ignited Blades is a short-ranged attack that applies your weapon with fire. This can set enemies ablaze and then give you a nice attack for strength-resistant enemies. Actually, can deal decent damage at times, especially if you're hitting weak spots. I believe this is to give your thief an elemental option early on, making creatures like slimes and certain monsters a bit easier to handle. Later on, however, the skill falls off pretty hard. In fact, I had some daggers with a holy enchant, which made the added fire buff completely non-existent. What it can do is deal a bit of fire damage Damage, still adding burn to the equation, possibly allowing you to deal two types of elemental damage at a single time. I wasn't aware of this before, but apparently you can use this while clinging to monsters, which for griffins specifically could be quite nice. In the end, however, this is at best an early game skill. You gain a much more powerful fire attack during your acquisition of master skills than makes ignited blades look like you're hitting with spoons. Plunder is probably the most thief-like ability in the thief vocation. This allows you to steal materials from anyone who's not in a battle stance. Used on merchants, you can get a variety of items to sell, although most of the materials I got were fake wake stones that do nothing. In combat, all you need to do is make sure the enemy is staggered. This can easily be done in half a second using Implicate, and you get free materials without actually taking down the enemies. Sometimes it looks like this doubles your loot if you defeat them anyway, although it is really tough to say if this is the case or not. What seems like the best way to use plunder is for upgrading your gear. Say you need an item from an electrical saurian. Well, there's really only three in the base game that I'm aware of, and maybe not any of them are going to drop the item on your first go. You use this before you defeat them, and now you greatly up your chances of getting not only one item, but multiple. I didn't really have that much fun with this other than seeing what kind of cool things I could get. However, a pawn equipped with plunder will have you feeling like a kingpin. For some reason, they know how to use this ability very well and could make you rich, without you even knowing it. Concussive Leap is a short distance somersault backwards, dealing no damage and only briefly stunning opponents, which makes it a movement option entirely. And on the surface, this seems pretty bad since you already get a dodge when playing as a thief, and why waste a skill slot on this then? Surprisingly, I really enjoyed my time with this skill more than most. It can be used to reach ledges you would never get to otherwise, cutting down on the walking time. It can also be used to get closer to those flying enemies if need be, or launch you further up monsters, so climbing them is way faster. But the best and most fun tactic used with this skill is pairing it up with Powder Blast. You're gonna attach a bomb to a monster's head, jump off with Concussive Leap, and then blow them up mid-air. Extremely fun and cinematic every time. Really, any situation with Powder Blast involved can be improved by this because Powder Blast stuns you on activation. Concussive Leap is so fast you can get out in time to activate the bomb for no stun on you, but still dealing that good damage to your opponent. And it uses almost zero stamina on every activation. I highly recommend this skill for fun and fun alone, even though it isn't at all necessary. Masterful Kill is your counterattack. If you correctly time the activation when an enemy attacks you, your response is a brutal high damage cut. On smaller enemies, you jump up and double slash the back of their neck. While for big monsters, you have a jump up making a large slash across their body. For those who remember this in the first game, this is a heavily nerfed version. That one lets you have an infinite parry window and it worked on virtually every melee attack. Surprisingly, was great for dragons. I tried this against several enemies and because dragon attacks are built a bit different in this game, Masterful Kill is virtually worthless on them. If it happens to connect, it won't really target the heart very well. And this applies for most of the bigger opponents. It'll block the attack and deal some damage, just not that much really. You're gonna focus this skill towards small targets, and heck, it really is quite good there, making dealing with Geosaurians easy enough and deals such high damage it will often be a one-hit kill. 
Thankfully, the timing required for this to activate really is not all that tight, giving you enough freedom to make it work more often than not. Still, not a guarantee though. Cutting Wind is a very quick rush forward leading to a large slash. If you continue to use it, multiple slashes can be added to rapidly cut down your target. The advantage here is a lot of movement, easily being one of the fastest attacks in the game and covering a very large distance. You can use this defensively to get out of bad situations, or I quite liked chasing down wolves and goblins who were running away. The damage is very solid and you're not going to use an absurd amount of stamina in one go. I would not recommend Cutting Wind for large monsters since it doesn't target vitals all that well and can act very unpredictable at times. Most of the time, it's simply better to climb up and get near the vitals, but for serious combat where you need movement, I don't think you're going to want to run without this. Makes targeting down the most frustrating enemies a simple task, and always tracks onto targets better than you would expect. Surprise, this was also in the first game, and both versions are almost identical as far as I can tell. Draw and Quarter is a monster killer. In fact, you can't even use it at all unless you're clinging to one of the large beasts. The idea here is to give you a massive finisher move for really high damage. After you've climbed all the way up to the enemy's vital spot, most often the head, you can activate this, which thrusts your dagger in with tremendous force, dealing good damage and feeling very solid. Right after, you're going to pull the dagger out, attacking multiple times as you jump off the beast. And I'll be honest, it kind of makes no sense as it hits multiple times over while well, it looks like you just stabbed him one time. But regardless, the damage is unbelievable. I managed to decapitate a Medusa using only this rather quickly. One attack is fast enough to get in without being thrown off and the damage wipes out enemy health bars two at a time. The main downside is that once used, you're completely back on the ground and not up on the monster, which begs the question, is this better damage than simply using Scarlet Kiss repeatedly? I think Draw and Quarter is for times where you know you won't be able to stay on that monster very long. Using it will deal great damage to get you out of the enemy's grab or throw that they're gonna soon use, and it's such a brutal feeling that you have to try it. Smoke Shroud is a smoke bomb. It throws down a cloud of smoke that makes it harder to see. And this is garbage, right? Because, you know, smoke is just useless in every game. Actually wrong. Turns out any enemy that even touches the smoke completely loses all aggro. Any enemy will not only stop attacking entirely, but stand there while you hit them as much as you want. Smoke Shroud is so good that even an ogre will walk around helpless as you cut him up. Now, it does cost a steep amount of your stamina bar, but look at the benefit. This is easy mode. You're literally not being attacked by the hordes of enemies standing next to you. Wolves can never eat you again, Saurians get their tails cut off immediately, and you really don't take any damage at all. The smoke lasts quite a long time too, making it completely brain dead gameplay in a fun way. Only issue I found was that it's not too good for dragons. Got the smoke to work for a few seconds, but then the scaly guys seem to ignore it altogether. But the crazy thing is, you're not just making your pawns invincible like with Mystic Spearhand's bubble, or making yourself invulnerable with Formless Faint. You're turning off the brain of every opponent near you. Backstabs, assassinations, fun skills can all be used without worry. If Thief wasn't absolutely filled with overpowered skills, then this would never leave my skill slots. Becoming an actual ninja is, to no one's surprise, really fun. Powder Blast is a small charge or explosive that you place on the ground. Once you activate the skill again, it's going to instantly detonate. It deals a large AoE of damage, making it great for hitting multiple areas on monsters or smaller groups. Even better, it can be placed on top of large monsters. So climb up, put this on their head, now you can set off a massive bomb on their weak spot. Powder Blast is extremely reliable for high damage, and even when on the ground, it has such a nice range that larger targets get hit every time. You can use this to take out multiple golem spots at once. You can exploit the weakness of griffins and chimeras because it deals fire damage and can cause burning. And overall, it staggers the heck out of every target you face. I didn't really find it that good against dragons again, which is no surprise because, well, it's fire damage, but every other target is toast, especially great early on as it makes up your lack in levels when it comes to dealing high damage. Powder Blast was one of the key parts of the assassin vocation in original Dragon's Dogma and still manages to be one of the most fun and strong attacks in this sequel as well. Plus, just look at these cool jump detonations right here. Way too awesome to pass up. 
Skull Splitter is a high jump upwards that has you rapidly spin your daggers pointed out. As you go up and come back down, the daggers hit targets multiple times over. So many times, in fact, that there is no way to know how often you're actually hitting the target. Skull Splitter is one of the strongest attacks in DD2. It's got some very nice range, making it easily hit enemy vitals. And once you do, it completely shreds health bars. Actually turns those drakes into tiny baby dragons that you don't even think are a challenge at all just completely obliterates anything you come across in a single attack. Now the two downsides here are it does consume a large section of stamina, and the animation locks you into a short delay afterwards, so it isn't uncommon to get hit while using the attack. Thanks to the high damage however, monsters can often get staggered and smaller enemies are always dead, erasing that issue for the most part. And a good mage grants infinite stamina so you can infinitely spam blades of death. If Thief wasn't already this game's easy mode, this would really solidify it. And surprise, this was one of the strongest attacks in original Dragon's Dogma as well from the Strider class. Apparently, Thief gets all the cool toys from both past and future, and hey, I don't hate it. Implicate is a rope you throw that latches onto enemies. When hitting medium and undersized targets, they're thrown towards you instantly staggered, and for larger monsters, you get to tug on the rope trying to pull them off their feet. This is a very clean animation that I can guarantee you're never going to run without. All the smaller enemies are instantly staggered, decreasing their attacks and letting your team rapidly take them down. Not to mention, it is the best way to take down Harpies and Succubi in the game, and those guys get really annoying. Pull them out of the sky and attack as much as you like. Then for the big monsters, it guarantees they're going to fall over when the time comes. Problem is, when Cyclopses are about to fall over, you might be too far away to actually get them down. Implicate lets you quickly latch on and ensure they're going to get into a more weakened state. A surprisingly simple skill that outperforms most in the game, as it lets you neutralize multiple targets quickly, and seriously, getting flying enemies out of the sky this fast is a dream come true. Your prowess in battle is heightened about 10 times, if not more, when Implicate is on your person. I dare say it's required to be a thief at all. Others without it are just posers, and they should get with the times. Blades of the Pyre is a large fire blast that comes off your blades very quickly. You pretty much create a huge spark with your blades sharpened together and it explodes anything in front of you. The advantage to this attack is that it might possibly be the strongest attack in the game. Stamina is manageable, the AoE hits up, down, and everywhere in between. You deal elemental damage, which a lot of enemies are weak to. It has crazy stagger. Just under a dragon's heart, you can attack their precious organ and their head, taking out one full health bar with each attack. Only problem is, it also burns you and explodes you too, which takes out a really big chunk of your health that the burning then continues to eat at. On its own, Blades of the Pyre is never going to be worth it and should just be avoided at all costs. However, it turns out that the Master Skill Formula's Faint will dodge the self-damage, so make sure you have that active and you can spam what is arguably the best attack in the game with no downside. Anyone who's used this can tell you the combination of skills will take out the biggest monsters in seconds. It is what makes Thief the best class on top of all the other shenanigans he gets. Only factor is you must use this skill with Formula's Faint. Otherwise, it is useless. Thankfully, if you're going to rank skills, you do it based on how to correctly use them, and not in how you don't use them, making it the strongest attack in Thief's arsenal. And Formless Feint manages to be the single strongest skill from the Thief vocation. This is the master skill for this class that grants you a small black cloak. While active, it drains your stamina and makes you completely invulnerable to everything. You can't be put to sleep, can't be turned to stone, can't take damage, and cannot be hit with magic. You're 100% invulnerable and can still use all your skills and other functions like normal. You can actually decrease the stamina consumed by this skill at the Dragonforge guy, making sure it will last an eternity. And when the stamina is almost up, you just get saved to deactivate the cloak before re-engaging in combat. Also factor in that mages can grant infinite stamina and now you're just playing Dragon's Dogma 2 while immortal forever. And yeah, what it does is turn pretty sticky situations into really nothing at all. Allows you to even use Blades of Pyre in the first place, which is nice. And lets you have complete freedom in this game. The automatic dodge animation is really cool looking and straight up easy mode. Funny that the most agile and capable class also gets to be completely unkillable. You can't tell me they didn't just design this game to make Thief, because he's got everything and more. And there you have all of the Thief skills ranked from worst to best. Surprisingly, there are about six different S tier skills and only one that is worthless. Everything here can be used to great effect against multiple foes. 
Smoke to turn enemies into glorified dummies. Powder Blast to explode for the best fun possible. Skull Splitter going burr on dragon's brains. Implicate negating all challenges associated with flying enemies and the blades with faint combo that deletes Dragon's Dogma 2 with literally no effort. Thief is without a doubt the strongest and most capable class in Dragon's Dogma 2 from early to late game. Packing some of the most fun abilities and highest DPS dagger slashes that makes you a menace whether you play with pawns or don't. Simply taking two of the strongest classes from original Dragon's Dogma, that being Strider and Assassin, then combining them gives you the tried and true Thief vocation. Hopefully you enjoyed this video and if so, a like down below would be fantastic. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you next time.